A fun bit of early internet history that's routing related concerns something that's known as the Morris Worm, or also the Great Worm. So this is November of 1988. A student at Cornell named Robert Morris is trying, he claims, to map the internet. So this is very, very early on, the early internet. Um, there were, I think at that time, about uh, 60,000 machines that were connected to the internet. Um, so the internet was fairly small, and the way that Morris uh, proposed to do this was to use something that's called a computer worm. Let me explain how a computer worm works. So a computer worm tries to infect other computers on a computer network. It exploits some vulnerability in some of the software that they were using, and there were several vulnerabilities that Morris identified and exploited. And when a worm arrives on a particular computer, let's say this is my computer here, what it tries to do is spread to other computers on the same network. So it will contact those computers, and the same way that it arrived on this computer using some sort of security vulnerability, it will uh, try to spread and to get onto these computers. And it keeps doing that. So um, you know, it keeps finding new computers to infect, and over time tries to um, uh, infect the entire network. And again, uh, Robert Morris's goal, stated goal, was to try to map the internet. So he's trying to find all the hosts that are online, and this seems like a reasonable way to do it. Just, you know, uh, and, you know, go to the, write this little program, and have it infect all the computers online, and then once it's done that, it's going to report back a little bit of information, and we can build a map of, of the early internet and how it's connected. Here's the problem. The problem is that this worm, um, so one way of designing this particular worm would have been if the worm was trying to infect a computer and it noticed that there was another copy of that worm that was already there, it would not infect the computer. And that would have been a reasonable way to design this particular program. However, Robert Morris was concerned about the fact that people might try to defend themselves from this worm by just uh, claiming that there was a copy there when there wasn't. And so what he did is that when, so let's say uh, this worm is going to go to this computer, and the worm already is here, it already arrived from another computer, but what this, uh, this time when the worm tries to infect the computer, it's going to do the following. It's going to flip a coin, basically, and one out of seven times, even if this worm is already here, it's going to install another copy of itself. So, unfortunately, this ratio is too big. And what happened is, even though six out of seven times the worm would not reinfect a host that it had already infected, over time, that one out of seven was enough that computers ended up running hundreds, thousands of copies of this little worm program. And the problem was, this little worm program, I mean, it didn't do much, but once you had like a thousand copies of it installed, it slowed down the machine to a crawl. And so this, this worm, basically brought down the entire internet. 1998, November 1998, this was launched, and pretty soon the entire internet is infected. And every computer on the internet has like thousands of, tens of thousands of copies of this worm running. And these are early computers, it's 1998, and so they can't do anything else. And what's interesting is it was almost impossible to get rid of this thing, because what would happen is, let's say I take this machine off the internet, and I remove all the copies of the worm, I reinstall its operating system, or its software, as soon as I bring it back online, there's so many other copies of this worm out here that it's infected again immediately with a bunch of copies of the worm, and I'm right back where I started. And so, in order to solve this problem, what the people who ran the internet had to do was they had to disconnect every computer from the internet. In fact, this was a coordinated operation by everybody who ran uh, computer networks that were part of the internet. They had to all be shut down, all of the computers on them had to be cleaned, so we had to reinstall the software to remove all traces of the worm, and only then, only once you were positive that the computer was clean and you had talked to everybody else, could you bring that computer back online. And this, this process required a fair amount of time and energy. Um, Morris ended up being convicted of a felony for doing this. He didn't serve any jail time, I think he did some community service. Um, but, so he's now a convicted felon, 
However, he's also a tenure professor of computer science at MIT and has gone on to do really interesting, brilliant work in a bunch of other areas. So, um, so, so this is <laughs> The Great Worm. It's kind of a fun story about the early internet. It's not clear that we could do anything like this on the internet again. So if a worm like this infected the internet today, trying to get all of the machines that are part of the internet offline to do this sort of thing would be very, 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 very difficult. And so we're lucky that we haven't been hit by anything remotely like this uh, in the future.